2 Kings chapter 5, verse 15. Now we left off, Naaman is a Gentile who has leprosy. Upon attacking Israel, a little girl captive tells Naaman's wife and the people thereabouts, hey, there's a prophet. There's a God. The king of Syria sends Naaman down to the king of Israel, and the guy freaks out. Uh, what am I? Who am I? I don't have a religion. I was able to do anything. And they appear before Elijah, and Elijah sends out a man. He says, go and dip thyself in the Jordan seven times. Naaman gets angry. Oh, one of these rivers better than that river, blah, blah. I want a spiritual show. I want, you know, lights and Broadway and stage and performance. Finally, one guy steps out of the camp. He says, sir, you know, if he had asked you to do that, would you have done it? Naaman goes down. He, he dips himself in the Jordan River seven times, and we'll pick up from verse 14, 514. Then went he down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the same the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child. He was clean. The Jordan River is where John will show up baptizing. And he returned to the man of God, Elijah. He and all his company, the army, the soldiers, and came and stood before him. Now Elijah's there. Verse 10, it says, Elijah sent a messenger unto him. Now that he's obeyed the word of God, Elijah steps out. And said, Behold now, I know, I know that there is no God in all the earth, but in Israel. Acknowledging Jehovah, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look at that. This is a changed man. I declare to you that the only God there is is the God that healed me. And that God is your God. Now, therefore, I pray thee. Take a blessing of thy servant. Let me give you something. Let me pay. Let me offer you something. But he said, as the Lord liveth, that's an oath. As the Lord liveth, be whom I stand, God I stand, I will receive none. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. So, <clears throat> This is like Esau and Jacob. Here, here's a present. No, I don't need it. I got enough. Well, come on, man. You know, we're brothers. We're back together. Take it. No, I'm not going to take it. Oh, come on. I got enough. Okay, it's mine. I'll take it. With Naaman and Elisha, here, take it. Nope. Come on. All that God's done for me, all that you do, I'm not taking it. Because it's not Elijah that did it. It's God. And if Elijah would take that offering, that, that, that gift, he'll go back to Syria and say, well, I paid the man Elijah, and look what happened. Dr. Elijah healed me. I paid his copay. And many people do that. They'll be, oh, I've been healed. I've been taken care of. It's wonderful. Well, who, who did it? Well, Doctor such and such, and they forget God and don't give God any glory or any credit. So he don't take it, he refuses it. And Naaman said, Shall there not then, I pray thee, be given to thy servant two mules burden of earth? That mules, that's the only place that shows up. Mules, per, uh, plural, and burden, they're burden. What's he doing here? He says, Elijah, can I have two truckloads? Can I have two amounts what a what two mules would carry of dirt? Israel dirt. Holy dirt. I want dirt from here right now. For thy servant will henceforth offer neither burnt offerings nor sacrifice unto other gods. So see, there are burnt offerings, and there are sacrifices to small G-O-D-S. And when you deal with people who don't do what God's told them, don't do what the Bible tells them, well, I go to church, I give offerings, I do this, you are giving offerings and sacrifice to other gods. 
but unto the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, and that's out of his mouth. There's a difference between offerings and tithes and sacrifice to gods than there is offering and sacrifice unto the Lord Jehovah. Big difference. That's the Holy Spirit recording that. That's a Gentile man telling you that right there. I'm going to worship no other God but Jehovah. I'm done with that mess. I've been a leper all these years. I don't know how many years. And none of those gods helped me. But God has. Jehovah. In this thing, the Lord pardon thy servant. Now, a pardon is a very strong word. If you were to go walking, now, now America's blown that word every time we get a new president. Before he leaves office, he pardons such amount of people. If you were to go walking through a prison, and you were to say, decree of the governor, decree of the president, decree of God. You go up to the first cell, all right, here's a pardon. I didn't do it. I, 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 I was. It was the cops against me. It, it was my friend that was there. And uh, you know, I was in the wrong place, wrong time. You don't get a pardon. Absolutely not. You walk up to the next cell. Hey, we're offering you a pardon. I didn't do it. It was the alcohol. It was in me. No, sorry, I can't talk to you. You walk up to the next cell. And say, listen, we got a pardon here from God, from from the government. I'm guilty. I stand guilty. It was my crime. I did it. Whatever the decrees of how and why I did it, I did that crime. That guy can receive a pardon. In order to get a pardon, one must be guilty. And he says, in this thing, the Lord pardoned. This is Naaman. This is that Gentile. He says, may God, Jehovah, to pardon me. How can God depart in him if he does not acknowledge his sin he's acknowledging his sin in verse 18 god i'm the sinner god i'm the wicked one on that account god would offer a pardon he's not offering that pardon of offerings and sacrifices to gods He's not doing it to Mary. He's not doing it to a priest. He's not doing it to a pastor. He's not doing it to liquid. He's not doing it by works. He's saying, if God will pardon me because I am guilty. That's someone God will say, wait a minute. Stop feeding those whales for a minute. <laughs> Somebody take care of Neptune for a minute. Because I just heard someone come down and ask me for a pardon. I got to go meet that guy or woman. Naaman is declaring his guilt. That when my master, now this would be the king or maybe a ruler over him, somebody that is over his charge, that when my master goeth in the house of Rimmon, now that's another God. The house of Rimmon. And you will hear churches spoken about the house of God. Let's all go to the church house. Let's acknowledge for the fact is by the words of Naaman, who has asked God for a pardon, who's gotten right by God, who's declared God is his God now, from God that he offered and from God that he sacrificed. Let's now get that Naaman says that there is a house, not only for God, but there's a house of gods. So you may sacrifice. You may give an offering and you may go to a house, but it may not be God's house. It may not be God's offering. It may not be God's sacrifice. It could be to small G-O-D-S. Here's the guy's name, Rimmon. The house of Rimmon. That's a false god. And there are people all over the world. The church of Joseph, the church of Mary, the church of... Nothing's new. On look, look how many years that is before the birth of Christ. And you got a house of God named for the, for the God. To worship there. So whoever his leader is, it's over him. When they go into the house of Rimmon, Naaman has to be there. And he leaneth on my hand. I don't understand. Maybe some kind of form of worship. 
And I bow myself in the house of Raymond. I got it. It looks like it's a state religion. Like the Church of England. Like many of the, the Protestant churches throughout Europe. Communism. There is one sure church and you have to declare to go to that church in order to be right, in order to get married, in order to have that baby, in order to have your family go to heaven, in order you got to be buried in our graveyards in order for, this, for the sacraments. It looks like a state religion that Naaman has to go in order to go back to Syria. My question is, why didn't he just stay in Israel? The law would allow them. The law said a stranger could stay. I don't know why he didn't stay. But he leans on my hand. I bow myself in the house of Rimmon. When I bowed down myself in the house of Rimmon, three times mentioned, the unholy trinity. You can have a God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and be unholy. There are going to be people in 15 days that are going to worship an unholy Jesus. A Jesus that was born December 25th, and that's not the biblical Jesus. When I bowed down myself in the house of Rimmon, the Lord pardoned thy servant in this thing. I'm guilty for being in that house, but i got to be in that house. We've had that troubles in America in the beginning. After the uh, Congregational Church and the Anglican Church came in and set up their state religion, they would force separatists to go in that church. And, they, and one of the things would be, you know, to the separatists, you got to remove your house when you're in the house of God. And they, and they kept it on and say, yeah, I will remove my house when I'm in the house of God. Hat. Hat, yeah. You remove the hat. I'm not going to remove my hat because this is not the house of God. If you didn't go to the state church, you were confiscated goods and property and money, whipped even. So this is going on that Naaman, in order to go back to Syria, he has to attend this church. And the position that he is, he's got to take the king or somebody under his authority. He's got to lead them in there. And he says, Lord God, I have another pardon of you. I will be guilty of going into that house. I will be guilty of all those people that worship that God, if you will forgive me. And what he, what he wants to do is he wants to bring the dirt. He wants to put that Israel dirt where he would put his knees in that house of Rimmon. So if he bows down on the ground, not to Rimmon, but at least to the dirt of Israel for God. And he's also acknowledging the fact, too, is, hey, listen, I'm just but dirt and ashes. I am not worthy, God, of you. And I just ask if I can have some of your dirt so I will not touch the ground of Rimmon. How's that? Now, you ever think about this? And maybe I'm getting criticized. But, you know, you got this multi billion dollar church. What would you think if this guy came with a bucket load of dirt and dumped it on the ground and just. Great mausoleum of a church. <laughs> They'd be all angry. Yet one of these multi-million dollar churches, they are the house of women. They're not the house of God. And he said, Elijah said, unto him, Naaman, go in peace. So he departed from him a little way. That's interesting. And Elijah didn't stop him. Get some dirt. Now he didn't, he, let Naaman go. Naaman's asked God for a pardon. Now, it would be great to stop right there. And we could. And we could pick up the next section. It would be great for another night. But it holds in character that we need to learn about a new, you know, not here where we're reading now, but today about a new Christian. Naaman's new, set. He's changed his life. He's turned to God. He's finally gotten right. And when we witness to somebody and they get right and they turn to God and they call upon Jesus Christ as their Savior and too many people leave them alone and let them go their ways. Don't call on them. Don't mail them letters. Don't email them. Don't, don't have nothing. Don't even train them. Look how many we got saved. And then up comes a Gehazi. 
Ski, however you want to say his name. And this will happen with new converts. Somebody will come up through Satan and will try to deceive, try to steal. 1-800 number. Oh, I, I, I listen to this ministry on TV. I hear these people on the radio. And I send my money to them. I support them. Gehazi. They don't know any better. They haven't studied the scriptures enough. And this when you need to take your arm around them and say, well, let me show you the way. I got somebody I, I want this this week, maybe. I'm not, Lord willing, I just want to show, you know what? Christmas is not Christ. It's not Bible. And see where that goes. And Gehilzai, the servant of Elijah, the man of God. Here's somebody who's been in the work and the ministry of Elijah, God's servant, Elijah. If there's anybody who knew better, ought to know better, and ought not to do what's about to be happening, it should have been Gehilzai. Said, now he said this to himself. He did not dare to say this to Elijah. He would not dare to say this to any people of Elijah. Or anybody would go tell Elijah, did you just, I, let me tell you what I just heard Gehazi say. Now he's either said it to somebody who he can trust and will not go back to Elijah, or he's talking to himself. Behold, my master, Elijah, has spared Naaman the Syrian. And not receiving at his hands that which he brought. Well, can you imagine Naaman not giving to the offering? Can you imagine Naaman not giving? He did not fill the envelope. He did not fill the basket. How dare he do that? But as the Lord liveth, that's an oath. That's an oath. Elisha said, as the Lord liveth, I will not take. Gehilzai says, as the Lord liveth, I will run after him and take somewhat of him. Wow, Romans 7.7. 7. Romans 7.7. 7. Let's check out the sin. Romans 7.7. 7. Two sins, but one sin, mighty sin. And this goes on in churches all across the world. Romans 7, 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust. Ooh, dirty pictures. Ooh, ooh. magazines, internet. Ooh, isn't that lust? Oh, oh, oh. Except the law has said, thou shalt not covet. Ooh, that gives a new vein to lusting. It's not looking at a naked body or dirty pictures alone. It's, oh, look at that donut. Oh, I wish I had, oh, look at that sandwich. I got to go down to the, to the sandwich shop again. Oh, look at that, that new, oh, look at that new tool. Oh, I got to go tomorrow. I got to go get me that new tool. That's lust. Scripture with scripture. Don't hear that preach much in the churches today. And we're kind of like a church here. I mean, guys under Elijah, hey, I lost and I want money. I want. So Gehilzai followed after Naaman. And when Naaman saw him running after, he's running. He's not walking. He's, before he gets out of town, let's go. He lightened down from the chariot to meet him and said, is all well. <laughs> he stops that chariot. <laughs> What's going on? What's, what's, uh, why? You're running. There's an urgency. There's a matter. You're, you're, what's going on? Something happened? Elijah, well, you get sick? And he said, all is well. Now the rest of this verse is lies. All is well is true. Is that not what Satan... All is well. My master, Elisha, has sent me. No, he didn't. Now, Naaman has no idea. he taken the, the word of this guy who's the right hand of Elijah. Naaman should have turned those carts around and said, 
Well, if Elijah sent me, let's go. Let's go back and talk to him. Yeah, then what would be Gehilzai's reaction? No, 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 no. We don't need to go back. Don't want to have you come out of your way or something like that. Saying, behold, even now there be come to me. Sometimes you got to read it real slow. There be come to me from Mount Ephraim. Boy, he's really stretching this lie out. Two young men of the sons of the prophets. Now, that's a lie. That is an outright lie. Why two men? Because I can get double as much. Men of the sons of the prophets. Give them. I pray thee a talent of silver and two changes of garments. There's that garments again I talked about the other night. There's something about garments are highly valuable. And Naaman said, now Naaman is going to be a preacher here. And he has no idea he's preaching a message to Gehilzai. Be content. Remember this told you he's coveting, he's lusting? Naaman's words are to him, be content. In other words, you ought not to be here. You ought not to be asking me for what you just asked me for. And Naaman has no idea he has preached. A message. If Gehilzai would have been content, he would not. He, he would. You know what, Naaman? Forget it. Uh, whatever. Let's stop right here. And maybe even tell Naaman. You know what? I was just here for your riches. I lied. That would have been a, that would have been the altar call for this for Naaman saying, "Be content." Let's see what happens. Take two talents. He asked for, for a talent of silver. Maybe if he said two men, maybe he knew he'd get twice as much. Take two talents. And he urged him. Well, verse 16. And he urged him to take it, but he refused. That seems to be the way of Naaman. That is the oriental way. That was Jacob to Esau urged him to take it. Take it. I think Luke 8 1. Let me check that one out. Luke 8 1. Luke chapter 8, verse 1. No. I don't know what that reference there. But urged Lord's working on Gehazi he is playing back what Elisha and Naaman were there talking to each other but for Gehazi it's to wrong it's to wickedness for Naaman it's to glory it's to honor and when we read that Jesus read this to his family folk and his town folk they got angry. They were ready to kill him. And I would assume that I know it's, there's no chapter 5 in the scrolls. But for the sake of, of where we're at, the story of Naaman was probably not read or studied quite often in the synagogues. Probably had a load of dust on it. Because here the good man is the Gentile, the bad man, is the Jew. Now let's bring it to the church age. Here's a Gentile telling a Jewish man on how to get right with God. Now isn't that interesting? Here's a man that had leprosy, a type of sin. And he comes to God and he does what God has told him to do. And he gets washed, he gets clean. He says, I am leaving those gods. Paul calls them dumb idols. Because they can't hear. They can't talk. And he says, from this point on, I am going to serve the God of the Jews. Now, the state religion says that the Lord will pardon that. Here comes this Jew, this Gehazi, and he's out for fortune. He's out for riches. And that is true for the Jews today. They are the bankers. They are the investors. They're still God's people. 
And God has called the Gentiles because the Jews have rejected Jesus and bring in to the Jews the gospel that's really theirs that Jesus saves. You have a Gentile preaching to a Jewish person and that God has wrought miracles in them. No wonder the people in Jesus' congregation got angry with him. How dare those Gentiles tell us what to do? We're the Jews. We're the people of God. We're the circumcision. And throughout the book of Acts, the Jews are the ones that, that would go against the apostles, go against the Christians, and torture and kill in prison. How dare you? You got a picture, a wonderful picture of a saved Christian in 2 Kings chapter 5. And now he's telling the Jew what to do. And laid them upon two of his servants. Now I don't know if those two servants are Gilhazi's servants or Naaman's servants. That they bear them before him. I, I don't know who that is. But he gets double what he asked for. And when he came to the tower, Gehilzai. Now I have a little note here. And I'm going to read to you. I'm not changing the Bible, but just what I know as far as religions. I'm going to read you what I wrote here. And when he came to the watchtower, you say, well, why did you put that in it? Because when you get new Christians, somewhere along the line, a watchtower shows up. That or the plain truth. Those were quite wild before I was saved. I remember when Grandpa would take me shopping at the A&P. Those, those and he even got involved with that before his salvation. There's these nice, fancy, pretty pictures of magazines. There was even a Bible that you would find in doctor's office. I remember growing up. It had great illustration pictures. Uh, I forget what it was called. The Children's Bible. Okay. You know what those are? Pretty pictures. Lust of the eyes to attach themselves to that new Christian, to that Christian who hasn't grown, who the wolves say, there's that little, there's that little lamb. Let's go eat them. Let's go devour them. That's exactly what Jehovah Witnesses do. I know somebody who Jehovah Witnesses try to attack, and they're trying to attack now because he's got teeth and biting them. I know a few people who's come out of that Jehovah Witness personally. People I work with, that's glory to God. But there are more people who come to my door, even though my car has bumper stickers in my yard or signs about God being Jesus and Jesus is God. They come still knocking on my door trying to get me out from God. And one of the doctors is God is not Jesus and Jesus is not God. Or Jesus came to North America and gave us another testament. Now you don't have to worry about the Catholics as much. Because they don't go after. We go after them. And our stakes of going to the Catholic Church and trying to get those out of the Catholic Church, we have enemies that try to come into our church, our congregation, and try to get them out. There are more Jehovah Witnesses marching up the doors and knocking on doors and ringing bells than born-again Bible-believing Christians are. And when he came to the watchtower, the tower, he took them from their hand. Now, I would assume maybe that's the servant. It could be either or. So, he's on his way back. He's on his way back to Elijah, and what's he do? He runs to a place to unload the goods. Because he's not going to carry them back to Elijah. He's not going to say, look, Elijah, look what I got. Proving his dishonesty. Proving his deceit. Because I just go up to Elijah and say, look what I got. He took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house. And he let the men go, and they departed. Rachel and Achan did this. Rachel stole her father's God and hit him. Achan stole that wedge of gold, that garment and all that, and hit him. Rachel didn't go run up to honey pie. Hey, honey, look, I got my father's God. Achan didn't say, Joshua, look, I got this. It's hidden. 
but it's not hidden. But he went in and stood before his master. What a deceiver. And Elijah said unto him, Whence cometh thou, Gehazi? Where did you come from? Huh? Be sure to know that your sin will find you out, Gehazi. Numbers. Watch him lie again. And he said, Thy servant went nowhere, <laughs> no whither. You liar. And he said unto him, Elijah, Went not my heart with thee? And he, he went in the spirit of Elijah and his deceit and, th and, and fraud. When the man turned again from his chariot, that's Naaman, to meet thee. God has revealed to Elijah that whole entire event that happened. Here he comes running and Naaman stopped and said, hey, what's going on? Behold the eyes of the Lord in any place, behold the evil and the good. It ain't Santa Claus that knows who's good and bad. It's God and God spoke in the ear or spoke somehow to Elijah say, that servant of yours is in big trouble. Is it a time to receive money? To receive garments? Oh, look at it. Receive money and garments. That's exactly what he received. Throw some more in there. And olive yards and vineyards and sheep and oxen, men servants and maid servants. That's Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's a time and there's a season. That moment when Naaman came to Elijah saying, I am going to worship God. I am going to serve God. That was not the time to receive the money. Verse 27, the leprosy thereof of, of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, stick to you, and unto thy seed forever. Elijah was not a man to mess with. He had a couple, yeah, I think he said 21 kids come up, thou ball head, thou ball head, and two she bears came out and ripped them in pieces. This servant comes back after lying to see me and says, you know what, you're going to be lepers. And they were lepers. He was leprous. And he went out from the presence a leper as white as snow. So here, again, leprosy pictures sin. And any man is going to deceive somebody who's, who's believed on God and has gotten right. It's going to be a damnable sin, and you need to read Jude and Second Peter about these deceivers.